We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me tonight is Michael Plants. What's going on, Hey, man. Pal? How's it going? It's going all right. Um, unfortunately, we're down a member of the Wolfpack tonight. Mike Bonney couldn't join us because he's doing uh, dealing with a uh, personal man manager, down. So, Yeah, Ike, if you're listening, we love you. We're here for you, bud. Yep, sending our love. But let's uh, jump into some brighter news, guys. It's uh, football week. It's coming. I know I'm ready for it. We're playing you. Yeah, I was hoping that, you know, there's going to be no more COVID scares. We got a couple, you know, false positives throughout the week, but everything's looking good. Yes, sir. Um, there's four teams on by this week, guys. The schedules have been changing because of the, the fluidity of the COVID stuff. Unfortunately, but uh, Seahawks are on a bye, Chargers are on a bye, Saints are on a bye, and the Raiders are on a bye. So Russ can't cook this week for your fantasy teams. Elvin Kamara guys. can't carry you to a victory. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Unfortunately, there was no Thursday night football game because the Bills played on Tuesday, and then they were supposed to play again on Thursday, so that game had to be pushed back. So there's no Thursday recap to review, but I wanted to let's go over a couple of things that happened. Yeah, Dan Quinn is the second coach fired after Bill O'Brien, Raheem Morris was named the interim. Kind of shocked coach. it was a dirt cutter, but hmm. change is good. Yeah, I don't. Apparently, Raheem Morris was a coach or a head coach earlier in his career, but I don't. It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, to I really. Be honest. I, I, if he, the Buccaneers, maybe. maybe I know Dirk Cutter was. <laughs> yeah, but how is uh, is it? It's just a matter of time. Adam Gase is next, right? I think the question is why hasn't it happened yet? They let go. Of, I don't know. They let go of possibly he, their most talented player. <laughs> he's booty. Definitely booty, but. I don't know, man. What do you say we jump into some game previews? Yeah, now? we can get to that. Cool. Um, Denver Broncos at the New England Patriots, guys. Drew Locke, questionable with a shoulder. <laughs> What's your problem? Like the plan? I'm stoned, <laughs> man. Oh. Let me take a drink. Hold on. Let me get it. I need to take another hit. (laughs) The first game, let's jump. Let's jump into the plan. Uh, Denver Broncos at the New England Patriots. Quarterback Drew Locke for the Broncos is questionable with a shoulder. Uh, Melvin Gordon also questionable. Not injury-related, but uh, he felt like getting a little drunk and uh, driving a car. He, he got a don't, don't forget, he got a little drunk and decided to go really fast in a car. <laughs> I think he was like 25, yeah. 30 over. Probably not a good idea. Um, you're probably not starting Drew Locke. To, this week, unless it's a two quarterback, and even that you don't want to, especially going against this New England defense. Yeah, I agreed. But Philip Lindsay, he, I feel. What do you think about that, man? With Gordon being I, I mean, personally, here I don't think Melvin Gordon's going to play. I think the team will make. I've been hearing that they might make him suit up and just watch from the sidelines. And if that's the case, I think Philip Lindsay's worth a flex play this week. But I think he's. You should lower your expectations because he is playing a solid defense in the New England Patriots. Yeah, and he might have a little rust because he hasn't played since. Week no, you're one not either. wrong there. I I remember hearing though, Vic Fangio said that Philip Lindsay was actually ready to come back last week, but he wanted to play it safe and just kind of you know 
leave him on the bench. So it, so, it sounds like he's all healthy and ready to go. Good deal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Throw him into your it, flex, guys, if you need to. A, probably he'd probably very lo- be very low priced in um, yeah. DFS as well this week. So he might be a good DSF. He's probably got the DFS best chance play. for his price point to fall in the end zone. Yeah. Um, then if Drew Locke does play this game, that obviously gives an um, uptick in volume and hopefully production for the wide receivers, right, Jerry Judy? Well, from what I've heard, Stephon Gilmore looks like he cleared the COVID list. And if that's the case, I don't want any part of Judy this week. Gilmore's a pretty locked-on cornerback. I, I, don't, I don't know if your opinion yeah, differs. Yeah, yeah but – with everything going on and the injuries, you might end up having to start Jerry Judy. I mean, unfortunately. you might get lucky. He does have the speed to take one to the house. I mean, I know Devontae Parker's had his way, you know, a little bit with Stefan Gilmore with his speed, but he also has that size to him. And I mean, Jerry Judy's he's tall, but he's not like, he doesn't have his NFL body yet. So he might not be able to physically sure. keep up with Stefan Gilmore. That's my own concern. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not thrilled about uh, any of the pass catchers for the I mean, Broncos this week. No Fant, he's questionable too. He's banged up with an ankle, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the way, like I said, the way they were playing it with Van, uh, Philip Lindsay, they might have him sit. I know he was trending towards playing, uh, but he was limited participant all week in practice. I mean, he's a 50-50 shot, Vic Fangio said, so I'm – Pay attention if he if he plays. I mean, you still. It's not ideal. You got a bad matchup, and he's coming off an injury. He could not be a hundred percent. They could be rushing it. I, I'm sure you're not very happy about it, but in future weeks, it's good. Agreed. Yep. Yep. Um, moving on to the Patriots quarterback Cam Newton sounds like he's going to be back, guys, which is. Great news for Cam owners, and I I like this matchup for him. Laplan, how about you? Yeah, I mean, Denver Broncos defense hasn't been the greatest. I know they, they they've had some injuries, kind of bog them down a little bit. Um, but you know, when Cam Newton's in and they get into the red zone, he's always got a good chance of just running, rushing it in, and getting using cheap points. He he's. I just don't think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I don't know if the Broncos are going to be able to keep up, and if that's the case, they might try and you know have another game where they try uh, where they played Mahomes and they might try and run it like forty times. So he might not have right. much passing volume, which will lower his ceiling. But he's got a high floor this week. Yeah, the the Broncos actually ranked ninth in quarterback points allowed with so that's not terrible. points this year. Um, but jumping into running backs, I'm worried about Damian Harris this week, guys. I filled in and did the, the start-sit article for our website this week, fantasy6pack.net. And uh, the Broncos rank second in the – or, sorry, they rank first in the league in fantasy points allowed per, to running backs, man. So it is a horrible matchup. 12.1 points per game they're only – That's not a lot. No. So I was a Damian Harris truther coming into the season, then obviously he got hurt, but then he looked great coming back last week, right? It's 17 carries, I think. Yeah, I mean, Cam Newton was out with the COVID, so they might have been just trying to limit the whole Brian Hoyer, Jared Stidham experience. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) definitely. I mean, you do like to see that volume. He reached the 100-yard mark. That's always nice to see. You get that extra point if, for that 100-yard game bonus. I mean. And what was kind of wild, the plan, is that Damian Harris got 17 carries. Sonny Michelle, when he was the lead back, hadn't gotten more than 11 this season. That's actually wild. Yeah. But uh, move it. James White, I don't know. What do you think about him? I'd probably stay I mean, I, I wouldn't well. consider him any more than a high-end flex, maybe just because of his PPR value, but if the if the Broncos can't keep up, they're just going to be handing him the ball in, in between the tackles, him and Damian Harris. 
Maybe sprinkle in a little Burkhead yeah. magic. Yeah. Yeah, but as always, that running back by committees, it's tough to pick the right guy. Yeah, just ask, ask the Ram running uh, back the, owners. Yeah, right. Then the wide receivers for the Patriots, Julian Edelman, Nikhil Harry. He's starting both, I think. Right? Yeah, Nikhil Harry is getting the red zone targets, which you'd like to see. Um, I just don't. You're gonna have to. You're not. The over under in this game is it's only like forty six and a half. So I mean, there's it's not gonna be a high scoring game. It's I just see it being a ground and pound no, game. No, I agree. Mainly, so I mean, yeah, you're you're yeah. not gonna get very yeah. good production from these receivers at least this week. But coming weeks, they should see an uptick. Fair enough. And then the tight end position for the Patriots, no one really relevant, so we could just jump to the next game. And that next game is the Houston Texans at the Tennessee Titans. What do you think about this matchup for uh, Deshaun Watson? Man, I don't. I mean, at first I loved it, and then after seeing the Tuesday night game, I feel like Tennessee's defense got a little bit better over you know this two week bye that they have kind of, had kind of. I I like it because he's going to be probably a top five quarterback this week just because it's going to be a high-scoring game. I know the over-under in this game is actually – I think it's in the 50s, if I remember correctly. I don't have it exactly on my hand. But but each team can keep up with each other. Each team's defense is – I mean, Houston's is just abysmal. Tennessee, Tennessee has a really yeah, good rush bad. defense. They held the Bills to uh, – under 70 yards, I believe. But they they, they can be happy. Yeah. Their, their, passing, yeah, their passing game is in the middle. Uh, they're 16th right in the middle for fantasy points to quarterbacks. Yeah, so, I mean, they can be had in there. Yeah, I, I agree. I like, I like Deshaun Watson. He's obviously got his rushing floor every week, and he should be – Chucking the ball all over the field, he like Yeah, play. he's always going to have those high, that high floor with his rushing value. So it makes him special, Absolutely. amongst other things. Absolutely. And then moving into the running backs, David Johnson. You already said you don't. Re- uh, Tennessee's run defense is pretty tough, so you're trying to stay away from David Johnson. I this wouldn't week? say that. I. He's going to have one of those very inefficient on the ground games. I don't think, like, you know, the ones you love so much from David Montgomery, like a, a 16 rush for 50 yards type of game. But with this game being, you know, a possible shootout, I, I could see him getting about five, six catches, which could make him a little bit more relevant. Yeah. He's coming off a decent performance, too, against Jacksonville at 17 carries for 96 yards. Is that, do you know how many receptions uh, he had? I might be able to find that real quick. Two Man. for seven yards. So, I mean, he's getting a little bit of volume. But the wide receivers for the Texans... Will Fuller, obviously, their number one. But then you have the battle of the number, the number two receivers. Uh, who you like better between Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb this week? Brandon Cooks. Uh, I know he's been going off a little bit. So yeah, he went he off went for off week, right? uh, 10 catches, I think it was, for 181 yards. I seen, like, that was his best stat line since, like, 2018. Yeah, it was. Oh no, it was eight receptions for 161 yards and a touchdown on 12 targets. Oh yeah, you love to see that volume. I know you do. You're a a volume volume slut. Uh, You'd love seeing those 12 targets after a game where he only had three and he had a goose egg with no catches. So I mean, it shows you he has the potential to be in this offense. I do like. I uh. I also like. Yes. I also like him. And over I Cobb. think he's going to be a great play this week. The Tennessee Titans they like to give up fantasy points to the number two wide receiver for some reason. I don't. I don't know what's so special about it, but they just like to. Interesting. 
And then the tight ends, Darren Fells, Jordan Akins. Looks like he's coming back this week after he was injured. Um, Darren Fells made my tight end column last week, and he caught a touchdown. But with Akins probably coming back, it's hard to say who to start between these two. So but if, if you do say. have Akins out, so pay attention to that injury report. If Akins out, I think Darren Fells has another good chance to fa- fall in the end zone. Yeah, why not? Yeah, um, Deshaun seems to seems to like Darren. You know, he's like a little bit of a yeah. He seems to find his way open, considering he's not that young. Yep. And then the Titans guys, quarterback Ryan Tannehill, just killing it. He was super efficient on Tuesday night against the Bills, twenty-one of twenty-eight for one hundred and ninety-eight yards, three passing touchdowns, and added. I believe five brushes and on it, the ground for 42 yards. Hey, don't forget about his almost rolled ankle guys. after celebrating that rushing touchdown. <laughs> He's been a pretty fire, guys. Like, he made this, the, my start sick column. He made the start. He made the starting part, so... Um, I, I love this man. Yeah, he's, I mean, I remember you? you saying, you know, after the Titans signed him to a long-term contract that he wasn't worth that money. He's making you eat your words a little bit, huh? Yeah. They set him up to succeed a lot, man, especially with that running game with Derrick Henry. He's not always efficient, but they keep grinding it out with him, and that just sets up the play. Yeah, it just really, makes, sets you, up everything it really makes you think because this is also one of those <laughs> – one of those unfortunate players that played underneath Adam Gase for a long time, and he never really got to sh- mm-hmm. show his potential. And now he's finally underneath, uh, you know, out from under his thumb. And look what he's doing. Yep. Bye bye, please. Hashtag fire Adam Gase. Running back Derrick Henry, obviously, must start this week. Solid. This is definitely a That's, great matchup. For last him. time we had that was with Jacksonville. Uh, so. Yeah, he 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 busted he did that shit, week. Right. Um, but after he, this guy just gets so much volume. I, I, no, he hasn't been efficient. I know fish. Taylor Lewan, his offensive lineman, he's been a little hurt. They lost Jack Coglin in the off season, so like it's taking a little bit longer for this offensive line to mesh together than than they probably had hoped. But I mean, yeah. last week was the the only time this season that Derrick Henry didn't reach 20 touches on the on the ground. Yeah, and he, he had 19. Nuts, I mean, and he still still got two touchdowns. So you know that he's yeah. he's one of the offensive threats to always be in the red zone uh, along with, you know, John o. Smith who's just making a a breakout year. <laughs> yeah, he's he's, awesome, he's kind of blowing my mind with how, how how efficient he's being with Tannehill. We should uh, listen to the hype. This offseason, Johnny was super hyped up. Um, but who was also hyped up was A.J. Brown, and unfortunately he'd been out for a couple weeks, but boy, oh boy, did he look good. Yeah, I'm Tuesday sure night. not many people started him with the whole Tuesday night, plus he was injured. I say a lot of people probably didn't get to have those points, but that was really good to see that guy. I mean, he looked really good. I don't know what you thought about him, but he, he got, yeah, he, he looks like he, he got like bigger in the off season, him and DK Metcalf, you know, former teammates at Ole Miss. They both look like they, they're just men in this league now. No doubt. Uh, but with him being back, does that I, make Corey I Davis think Corey irrelevant? Davis being on the COVID IR list makes Corey Davis irrelevant at this point. Um, I think. Fair enough. He hasn't. There has been no. Yeah, updated, he's going to be on it for at least I think two it. weeks. This is how long you got to be on the COVID IR list just to, for precautionary. Um, okay. but no, Corey with AJ Brown taking all the. Attention mostly on the number one targets. I can see Corey Davis being efficient. It's not a high volume passing offense, but with how efficient Ryan yeah. Tannehill is doing, I mean, it's very possible Corey Davis could have 10 touchdowns on the year. Nah. 
<laughs> Sounds like a good Johnny Smith. Hey, man. the way Ryan Tannehill goes, he could have 40 touchdowns, 10 to Johnu, 10 to Corey, 10 to AJ. <laughs> He could not yeah, he he might have the most touchdowns in a in a <laughs> NFL season with the least amount of yards. Yes. <laughs> um, jumping to the next one though, Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Quarterback Baker Mayfield battling kind of a rib injury. It's a brutal. Did, did brutal you see the quote he had? Matchup if he was going to play. Week. I didn't. Uh, close. Mama right? didn't raise no he bitch, He was being right? PR friendly. He said, <laughs> Mama, Mama ain't raised no wuss. <laughs> but we all knew what he meant. That's, that. Yeah, that's Yeah, uh, he's a uh, little fantastic. tidbit on him. He's out of 35 uh, career games for him. He's played 34 out of 35. He's only missed one game, so I think he's going to play. I think he'll tough it out. Yeah, but I wouldn't advise starting him other than super flex two quarterback. I games. have him as a, a deep sleeper this week just because, I mean, I know Baker's. Oh, that's right. I do remember you saying that on the, the big Well, I didn't want to be cheap uh, and take Matt Ryan because, you know, he'll yeah. probably have a good game against the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings. But, I mean, think about it, guys. Last week, Carson Wentz and Travis Fulgram, you know, threw for 10, 10 receptions, 100 40 yards, I think it was, and a touchdown on this pass defense. Like, they have a really good run defense. They do. But this pass defense isn't that great. No, yeah, they give it up 19 points per game for two and like, quarterbacks this year. ODB, uh, there was news of him getting sent, you know, home from practice because he had he showed signs of an illness. Uh, yeah, nightmare. And Jarvis yeah, Landry battling help. an injury as uh, well. It's looking like Austin Hooper might have an uptick in volume this week. Yeah, he might. I honestly think it's going to be slow it down, grind it out, run the shit out of the ball. So I think they could really – Kareem Hunt could probably see over 20 carries on the ground. They'll probably run the ball as a team probably 30 to 35 times, I would think. If they have any chance of winning this game, do you agree? Yeah, but I don't think it'll be efficient. No, but... may, no, maybe not. But they're going to try and keep the Steelers' high-powered offense off the field. I think it's going to come down to have – like, Baker is going to have to win them this game. I just don't Oof. think – I know. I don't think they're going like to win. They're that. not, not going to win, though. Then. You don't think so? They're four and one, man. They're hot. I mean, they're they're... Not, if Baker has to win them the game with possibly no Odell and possibly no Jarvis Landry, they're not winning this game, Mike. Yeah, if they don't have those skill position players, I, I don't think they will. But if yeah. they got Landry and ODB, I think they got a good chance to come out with a win. Sure, sure. I mean, obviously, Kareem Hunt is a start despite, yeah, the, despite the tough matchup. Uh-huh. Uh, ODB, um, he's not hurt, but. If if he plays, pay attention to this illness because I think he'll play, but just pay attention. Sure. This is a wild season. I'd start ODB. I'd temper your expectations on Jarvis Landry, though, because he is actually battling an injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, guys, well, who are you – do you want to start any of the wide receivers behind them? No. Yeah, I don't really think so either. But no, I, I would start – Austin Hooper's a start this week, especially – with the four bye weeks that kicked in this week, right? Darren Waller's on a bye. Yeah, you're losing. You're losing Darren Waller. You're Cook's losing on a bye. Hunter Jared Henry's Kirk, on Hunter a bye. Henry. It's yeah, it's tough week for tight ends. I had to pick up Eric Ebron, who we're about to talk about. Which I don't mind this matchup. The Browns have been sus- susceptible. Su- okay, you guys know what I. <laughs> yep. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, but now we can jump over to the Steelers since we kind of segued to it anyways. But let's jump over to the quarterback. Big Ben, guys, he's been rolling a little bit. You cool with rolling him like, rolling him out with against this Browns team? Yes, I am. Uh, and uh, it's kind of the same argument with Baker against the Steelers. Like this Browns, de- this Browns rush defense uh, is 
fourth or fifth in the league best at you know i think they only allow 80 something point six rushing yards per game third in the nfl with 60 and a half fantasy points allowed per game yeah they're so their rush defense is i mean maybe Tough. just as yeah it's maybe just as good as the steelers but their pass defense is just like the Steelers. They can be had in the passing game. Yep, look, they uh, allow 22 points per game to opposing quarterbacks, guys. Yeah, That's look what Dak did to them last. Uh, eighth worst in the league. Only behind the Falcons, Seahawks, Chargers, Saints, Bills, Washington, and then your Brown, and then the Browns. Yeah, all those teams are being thrown on this year. <laughs> so I, I think Big Ben's a good, you know. At the very least, a streaming option. Yeah. I think it'll be a, a QB1, maybe QB fringe one territory, like 12, 11. Yeah, for sure. I think probably even a little better than that. I, I would say top 10. I but hope running, so. Yeah. Running backs, James he's, Conner. Yeah, he's been hot lately. Yes, he has. Definitely a start with all the injuries and stuff. You probably definitely don't have anything better than that. No. Even in a little bit weeks. of a tough rush defense. What I do want to talk to you about, wide receivers here and the skill position players for the Steelers. Juju Smith-Schuster, um, James Washington, and Chase Claypool. You can tell they each have their own role in the offense. Don't forget about Deontay. Deontay he's hurt. He's gone. He's not playing this week. Has he been ruled out? Yes, he's been ruled out, unfortunately. So that might be Claypool season again for another week, guys. It might, it might be. Damn, he, this guy is just – he's getting so unlucky with these injuries. He's had a an, uh, an ankle injury, a back injury. Uh, yep. Concussion. concussion. Yeah. So not, not a very good start to his season. Let me ask you this. How worried are you if you're a Juju Smith-Schuster owner on a scale of 1 to 10? Five or six. It's getting pretty scary, man. I have him in a couple leagues, and he's hurt. He's hurting me. Uh, it, it's been he's been a, a victim to some weird game scripts. Like, Why? Other guys are blowing up. That's when Deontay the- Johnson was on the field. He was he was good. Claypool when he got the opportunity, he had fucking four touchdowns last week. I know, but once they got once he got that first end around touchdown, it was almost like. Mike Tomlin was like, feed the man. <laughs> yeah, just feed the man. Let's see how much he can get this, you know, this week. <laughs> yeah, he looked great. I I don't think Claypool is ever going to get four touchdowns in a game again. But I mean, you you can't give up on Juju just yet. I mean, because if all this production is going to be coming out of Deontay Johnson, Claypool. Eventually, teams are then going to switch their focus to them, and then Juju is going to be all alone, single coverage in the slot, where he can probably take advantage of that. It's just it's it's one of those offenses where they can support three fantasy relevant wide receivers like the Cowboys, but you get to the point where Juju is kind of becoming like Michael Gallup a little bit, not necessarily in the same role, but he's becoming the odd man out. Yeah. Some weeks, but then I gonna, know it's frustrating, man. You're gonna have those weeks like what was it, week one, where he had two touchdowns? Yeah, let me ask you this rest, right? Sorry, the rest of season, who would you rather have, Juju or Odell Beckham? Yeah, you have to pick the same game, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'd, ha- I'd, I'd have to go Odell. It seems like they're, I mean. Stefanski is at least trying to incorporate him in the game plan some way, somehow. Sure. Sure. And then, like I said earlier, I had to pick up Eric Ebron to stream him this week in a league as tight end. What do you think about that, LeBlanc? Are you all right with it? Yeah, the Browns aren't terrible. I mean, they're not great at stopping tight ends. I mean, Dalton Schultz scored a touchdown, had, I think, 86 yards on him. Uh, and, and he's the guy you didn't even know about until Blake Jarwin was out for the season. I mean, <laughs> so it's possible for Ebron to have the game. I know he was questionable coming into uh, the week, but it, he was trying to yeah, he's playing. He, yeah. yeah, he's off the injury report. So. Yeah, so I mean, my only worry is if he's 100%. 
But he was getting involved in the offense last week. Just uh, unfortunately, he fumbled. Or I think he fumbled. Yeah, he or he had a. Bu- yeah, he fumbled. So, um, jumping to the next game, guys: Baltimore Ravens at the struggling Philadelphia Eagles. Quarterback Lamar Jackson. He's uh, struggling. Not really. Yeah, he's not putting up the numbers that he was expected to when he was drafted in uh, the third, you know, second and third round in drafts this year. Yeah. What do you think's going on, man? I know he was, you know, he, he appeared on the injury report last week with an illness. So, I mean, maybe he's battling like a flu or something. Uh, yeah. But you kind of saw this. I mean, you knew he was going to regress the, the season he had last year. It just wasn't possible. I mean, for him to do that two seasons in a row. So, I mean, oh, yeah, we knew he'd regress a little bit, but this is this has been rough, man. Yeah, he, he had it, it kind of was like last year he he started off hot in the first game against Miami, I remember that, but then it kind of took him a couple more games to get in more rhythm. So he he's never been really a a hot start kind of guy. I, I think this offense will be figured out once they figured out the running back situation. Yeah, like he was 19 of 37 last week, guys, against the pitiful Cincinnati Bengals defense yeah, he, for only 108 yards with he an was, interception. He was airmailing some receivers. Yeah, he did throw two touchdowns, luckily, to save his week a little bit. He also only had two rushing attempts, which is wild for three yards. But – They were blowing him out, so. Um, The running backs, obviously, for the Ravens, we talk about it every single week on this podcast. It's a a shit show. And we're going to tell you every single week, stay away from it unless you absolutely have to. Yep, don't start any of them. They need to start using J.K. Dobbins more, man. It's ridiculous. The... He's just so much more explosive on the field. I know, but they're just not using him enough. I don't get what Harbaugh is doing. He's lucky he's got but, Lamar Jackson. Otherwise, he'd be reaching Adam Gase territory. Yep. And uh, I've been calling for the Marquise Brown break uh, breakout for the last three weeks, and it uh, it happened, guys. He finally got in the end zone. If you consider just uh, getting week. the end zone a breakout game. Uh, I believe he had five receptions, correct? As well, six actually. I, I think the thing you want you most likely you most like seeing was he actually received his most targets on the year this week, uh, with 10. Yep, that, that's always good. I mean, because his first three games he had six, and this in week four against Washington he had eight, so he had the uptick, and then he seen 10. That's great. With and he's not really known for a volume as a volume receiver, you know. No, and that was against the Bengals. Yeah. Right. So I mean, he is clearly the one B to Mark Andrews one A. Yeah, he's offense. Mark Andrews stud every single stud every single week, and the matchup's good this week as well. But jumping over to the struggling Eagles offense, Carson Wentz, guys, sit him. Ugh. Yep, bad matchup. Do not play him if you can. He belongs. He might belong. He's a streamer now. He belongs on the waiver wire if you're. He doesn't have. He's matchup dependent. Yeah. Yep. But I like oh, – sorry, I really shouldn't say that either. I don't really like this for any of the Eagles offensive players, this matchup. But you're obviously starting Miles Sanders with all the injuries at the running back position. Yeah, he's going to probably keep seeing that receiving work. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going to get volume. Volume, volume, volume. But the wide receivers, Travis Fulgrim, man. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdowns back to back weeks blew up last week. Yeah, he, see somebody we could uh, season we could stream week in and week out or what? I think season long he has value. I mean, he definitely has that connection with Carson Wentz on a team that has no connections when you have Zach Ertz not doing much. Yeah, yeah, that's so frustrating. Yeah. I think you said on the podcast last night, everyone's kind of just keying on Zach Ertz and try, 
and just kind of shutting him down and making the wide receivers beat him. Yeah, make some no namers like Travis Fulgram beat him. Yeah, and it almost Let's, worked. Go ahead. It almost worked against it's, the Steelers. Yep. But uh, what's going on? Is Elshon Jeffrey playing this week, or is he still just kind of hanging out? Elshon Jeffrey is not going to play this week. I don't think he's been officially ruled out, but he is not going to play. Uh, they're going to wait probably another week on him. Yeah, he has ru- been ruled out. Djax is questionable as well. He's right? the one that's probably going to play. I think yeah, he'll try. But he'll play for 15 snaps and get hurt again. If he's lucky, he'll probably yeah. re-injure that, re-aggravate that hamstring injury. Yeah, it's frustrating. But guys, yeah, the real we already kind of touched on it a little bit. You can sit Zach Ertz if you want. I, I mean, it's it's tough this week because of the tight ends that we talked about who are on buys. But he stinks. All the no, sorry, I shouldn't say that. He hasn't been fantasy relevant the last few weeks. You know, every time we he ha- every time we talk shit about somebody, we it's usually their week to go off. So I wouldn't be surprised if he finds the end zone twice this week for some odd fucking reason. Laplante, you know how many? If I told you that Zach Ertz has it had over ten receiving yards in the past two games. What do you think about that? Say that one more time. He doesn't have over 10 receiving yards in the last two games. That's blasphemous. <laughs> it's so crazy. What, what's, it, what's crazier is you tell me that step, but this, this guy is a, he's on the field 92% of their time on their snaps. Like, it, it, And it's like, he was a stud. Like, we all thought he, because he, he was going in, like, rounds fifth and sixth. Everyone was thinking he was going to be the steal of the year. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's just, just crap. Yeah, Mike, uh, two weeks ago against San Francisco, four receptions, nine yards. <laughs> Week five, one reception on six targets for six yards. So he has 15 yards in the past two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> He's only rocking a 57.1 catch percentage, too. So he, yes. he's not having a great year. <laughs> if he can, guys, if you have a better – maybe you drafted John. Two after Zach Ertz. You're starting Johnny Smith over him. For, probably for the rest of the year until Zach Ertz shows life. Yeah, until he figures it out. But, all right, we talked enough about that. Let's jump yeah. on to the next one. Washington football team at the New York Giants. Danny. This game suck. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's jump into the, the Washington football team first. And uh, it sounds like Kyle Allen, right? <laughs> yeah, he's clear. He's been medically cleared to play. Uh, and of, of course, we're going to have the, uh, the old journeyman, Alex Smith, backing him up, uh, which was a, it was great to see him get on the field last week. Was he wasn't ready, though. No. I'll tell you who else wasn't ready was the offensive line. Yeah, I agree. That poor guy, it was kind of scary. Uh, it's it's always fun being welcome back into the league, giving Aaron Donald a piggyback ride. Yep. <laughs> uh, but running back, you get yeah, – but sorry to, to finish, wrap up uh, quarterbacks. Don't start Kyle Allen. I mean, the matchup isn't terrible, but you can't no, yeah, trust him. I, I'm going to save you some time, and I'm going to – don't start either quarterback in this game. It's going to be a defensive game. Yep. Uh, but guys, go ahead and start Antonio Gibson. We like him. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, it's still you still don't know how you know Kyle Allen who if he's going to be just the dump off man like he was in Carolina. But Antonio Gibson has the best chance to fall in the end zone against this terrible Giants defense. Oh, definitely. So yeah, you start Antonio Gibson. It's a great matchup for him. And then the wide receivers, or should I just say wide receiver, Terry McLaurin. You worried about him, pal? I know you have been a couple leagues. I'll ask you the same thing again. Scale 1 to 10, how worried are you without his boy, um, Dwayne Haskins, in the lineup, t- chucking him the ball all over the field? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I am a little worried because Dwayne Haskins did love throwing him the ball. He was a target monster with uh, Dwayne Haskins tossing him it. Um, I will say though, not every pass was catchable. 
So there, those <laughs> are some more empty targets. Poo targets, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he's got a a not great matchup this week against uh, against James Bradbury. He's he's been pretty good this week. We've talked about him this on year. the podcast a couple of times. Yeah, he's been uh, pretty good. He held Amari Cooper to two catches for, I think, 19 yards last week. Yeah, that was just an Amari Cooper uh, disappearing act that we've also seen before. <laughs> yeah, so I, I like Terry McLaurin, though, in the in the coming weeks. Uh, he, <laughs> he's got just an unbelievable uh, – Amount of games. I'm trying to find it here. His schedule, you mean? Yeah. It, well, the the schedule he gets, man. Oh, here it is. Uh. So he gets the Giants this week, which yeah, Bradbury. He's 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 gonna give him a tough time, but it's I think Terry McLaurin. He's he's got the speed to be able to get open a, a few times, but then next week Cowboys. He gets his bye week. Giants again. Detroit Lions, Cincinnati Bengals, and Cowboys again. Mm. Yeah, like those are all great matchups. That is great. That is great. Uh, But tight end, Logan Thomas, getting a little bit of volume. And like we said, those good tight ends on a bye, you might might end up having to start him. It's not great, but you could do worse. Yeah. I, I I would I would stay away. Try and find like maybe maybe Robert Tanyan's still out on the waiver wire for you. I doubt it. He's out in like sixty percent of leagues now. I thought it was fifty six. <laughs> I seen, but yeah, he yeah. definitely took an uptick. Maybe. But moving on to the Giants, Danny, I turned the ball over dimes. Oh god, he looks like he's struggling, man. Nine. Oh, sorry. Nine. He is struggling. Actually, it's he's got five interceptions, four interceptions on the yeah, five interceptions on the year, and three lost fumbles <laughs> through five games. Uh, it's, it's bad. It's, I, we're probably starting both defenses, honestly. Yeah, no, I I am starting the Washington football team this yeah. week. Yeah, in the league. So that's a that's a great choice. <laughs> but running back Devontae Freeman, he's starting to turn it around a little bit. Fell into the end zone. There's starting to. Come into his own, I should say, since it was only his second week, but he fell into the end zone. Um, yeah, he's the low end flex. Yeah, if if you're gonna start anybody in this offense, and that's because of bye weeks too. Evan Ingram, you're starting him probably. Do you like? Uh, you brought well, you Jerry like Slayton, Slayton probably. Yeah, right? Darius Slayton a little bit. I mean, in his two games last year against the Redskins, he only had two receptions for 19 yards. Mm-hmm. In, in two games. So, I mean, in his career, he doesn't have a good, like, he's not been great against Washington. It's only a small sample size, though. So, I mean, he can turn that around. Uh, I just don't, I temper expectations because I don't know if Danny Dimes is going to have the time to be able to throw deep to him. Yeah. Agreed, man. Um, jumping over to the next game, Atlanta Falcons at the Minnesota Vikings. This game was the game we were worried about with the, COVID stuff, they came back as false positives. But is Matt Ryan broken? Without Julio Jones, yes. Julio's going to play this week, though. Then he's not broken this week. <laughs> and it's a great matchup. <laughs> yeah. And he's in a dome. Yeah. So he he's – Matt Ryan's oh, dependent on if Julio's in the game, from my opinion. Uh, he – He's just not good without Julio in the game. It's, it's, it's been shown on the eye test and statistically. I mean, the first week when he had Julio, he was fire. And then when he's been having this injury trouble, he's not been fire. I'd be shocked if he wasn't a top 10 quarterback this week with Julio. Oh, yeah. There. this is. I think this has the highest over under in, uh, out of any game this week. This is going to be yeah. a game that you attack a lot of DFS plays. And then running back, Todd Gurley, obviously. And then um, you know he's, Brian Hills. He's top 10 running back. Touches. Todd Gurley's top I know 10. He is, man. You're starting him. 
I think you're getting you you're gaining confidence with him just because they like to give it to him in the red zone. He's a good trade target, I feel like. I feel like he's undervalued still, so you might be able to get him on the cheap, you know? That's possible. I think some t- some people are probably looking at him as a trade high value too also. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Then the wide receivers, obviously, you're starting Julio Jones. You're starting Calvin Ridley. Just hope that he doesn't throw up a goose egg for you too. Uh, well, again. <laughs> and then – Russell Gage, is he irrelevant with uh, Julio Jones coming back? Man, it's tough to say because Russell Gage is relevant when Julio Jones is out on the field. Oh, yeah. That's why I think the correct answer is no, he's relevant. <laughs> I think there's uh, I think there's plenty of volume to go along, go around. In this game, absolutely. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Hayden Hurst even sees an uptick in volume. Eh, easy there. They don't like to use him, man. I, he's running routes, though. It's just for some reason, Matt Ryan does not like to target him. Which is weird. Yeah, I love Which is weird because Austin Hooper was obviously tight end one before he got injured last year. Maybe, maybe he's still gaining that chemistry with him. Yeah. Then moving on to the Vikings, probably the best quarterback streamer this week, Kirk Cousins. You agree with me or not? <sighs> Yeah, he's one of the best. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, nah, he is, he is. The you're best just saying that because you got him in one of your leagues this week. Atlanta has given up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks on the season, pal. By five more points than the closest team, than the next closest team, they've given up thirty fantasy points to quarterbacks this year. Yeah, and they've played Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Mitch Trubisky slash Nick Foles. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater went ham on him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Tedward two gloves. But what you don't know is Kirk Cousins hasn't thrown for more than 250 yards on the season. He also hasn't played against an Atlanta Falcons defense. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I just don't like. Hey, 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 hey. And Dalvin Cook's not there. I think Alexander Madison will still get carries, obviously. <laughs> And I like him, obviously. If you have him, you should start him this Yeah, week. the way the running back's used in this offense. That's why I lower my expectations on Kirk. It's just like this offense, they love to use the running back, whether it's dumping it off to him or handing it to him in between the tackles. Uh, but you don't think it'll be a little bit of a shootout this week? No, it will. I just don't. Like, my one thing is... I think you're just trying to shit on me because I like Cousins so much this week. <laughs> I... I just think, honestly, personally, the way Ryan Fitzpatrick's been playing and he plays the Jets, I think he's the better streaming option. That game's going to get out of hand too quick. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we touched on Alexander Madison, Delvin Cook. You're starting Adam Thielen. Out. He's been a stud. Yep. What do you think about Justin Jefferson? I, Same thing, starting him, firing him I, up. Yeah, right? in, this, in this matchup especially, I think he, he's going to be matchup dependent, dependent in future weeks, but – He's at least a solid flex play. Yeah, this is a sexy matchup. For oh, him. yeah. He, so. he might have another 100-yard game. And then tight ends, Kyle Rudolph, Irv Smith. Irv Smith made my tight end calm this week, guys, is streaming. It's, uh, it's not a great option, but he's seen an uptick in production. So I think uh, it's possible this it's possible this week against this shit Atlanta defense. Yeah, I uh, I think Irv Smith's in line for uh, a breakout game this week. I, they're going to have the volume to have to pass it. And uh, last week, he's seen his most, you know, he's seen his most targets at five last week. I mean, you, you like to see that, especially with a shitty tight end position this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving to the next game, Detroit Lions at Jacksonville Jaguars. Matt Stafford, prime matchup for him this week. Start him up. Yeah, you, you're starting Matthew Stafford this week. Jacksonville's pass defense has not been great. He's got Kelly Galladay. He's got Marvin Jones. You start Matthew Stafford. He's got all his weapons. Even his running back, Adrian Peterson, <laughs> is there for him. Yeah. That's- <laughs> Andy Andre Swift. And carry on Johnson. He's got weapons galore. It's just who, who's going to get the touches. Who are you starting out of the three? 
safely, Adrian Peterson. But PPR, if you're looking for chase points, probably DeAndre Swift. He's been more involved in the past game. How about you? DeAndre Swift as well. You're starting Kenny Galladay. Uh, in the, My man. In, in this matchup, though, are you starting Marvin Jones? No. no you, you don't like him? He lost it for me this year, man. What? Like what? He's he he hit age thirty and he, it's like he hit a wall. He can't do it anymore. Like you thought he was gonna blow up, like Galladay gone, and he did nothing. Yeah, he seems like he's always been the receiver that does better. I mean, with may, the maybe one. he, yeah, maybe he's best as the wide receiver too. But uh, I'm just not interested in him anymore. I am interested in Hawkinson though. If you if you are still holding on to faith to Marvin Jones, this is your best week for him. But like you said, Hawkinson, this is a this is a great matchup for him. If you're you know missing a Darren Waller, a Hunter Henry, Hawkinson's definitely a good streaming option this week. Could be top five tight end guys this week. And then the Jaguars, their offense is pretty banged up. Gardner Minshew. You'd think this was a good matchup, but without DJ Chark, well, he might be without DJ Chark. Visca's also banged up. I don't like this matchup for him with them guys. If those guys don't play, how about you? Yeah, I I, I kind of treat like, I mean, granted, it's only been a one-game sample size without DJ Chark, but he kind of reminds me of Matt Ryan without Julio Jones. If, if he don't have DJ Chark, he's not that great. Yeah, I agree. So pay attention to the injury report. But then running backs, James Robinson, man. He's been a stud. He's an every week starter. Every yeah, he, week. At least in our Yeah, he had too. a down week last week, and that's probably just because he fumbled. I, I think Doug Brown kind of punished him a little. Yeah. But he is the guy in this offense on the ground. I mean, I don't see Chris Thompson even being relevant again this year unless of, you know, an injury. Yep. And then uh, the tight end, Tyler Eifert, banged up. James O'Shaughnessy, unfortunately, with the bye weeks and the injuries, he made my tight end streaming article this week as the bargain bin option, rostered in 0.1% of leagues. If you need to, with everyone else out, if them guys don't play, it's quite possible he could catch a touchdown this week. Yeah, I only like him as if you're in deep leagues. <laughs> or if you're in deep, deep yeah, shit. <laughs> deep, deep shit sounds like a good way to <laughs> – good reason to put a player in. <laughs> it's a warm body. But yeah. you want to roll us into the next set of games, pal? Sure, I'll give it a whirl. So All right. next game we got the Cincinnati Bengals at the Indianapolis Colts, and uh, it's safe to say that we're not confident starting any Cincinnati Bengal player this week. No, and <laughs> Joe Burrow made the start sit column as the on the sit side. I don't. It's a I don't hope so. I'd have to play. question your intelligence if you put him in the start section. Well, we had just uh, we had just talked about how Atlanta was the worst defense against quarterbacks. How they given up thirty points to quarterbacks per game. The Colts have given up. 12 and a half Yikes. fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. What a discrepancy. <laughs> I mean, that is so wild. And the, for the fact, the offensive line cannot protect Burrow. I mean, you seen Burrow last week against the Baltimore Ravens. This is just a tough stretch of games that you're going to have to set him. <laughs> uh, yep. And the Colts pass rush is pretty nasty, uh, too, with Justin Houston, DeForest Buck. Yeah, obviously. same with Joe Mixon. This rush defense, I think we stated it was like third in the league earlier in the podcast, like Joe Mixon's going to have one of those fun games, 15 rushes for 40 yards, 45 yards, but he's, he's hopefully he keeps seeing the volume in the running game, Mike though, or sorry, in the passing. Yeah, game, yeah, just, it's a positive. You like seeing that because Giovanni Bernard was taking all those third down reps and now Joe Mixon's finally getting yes. that. Uh, like I said, though, lower your expectations. Uh, I did a yeah. little research on the Colts and, even running backs getting receptions. They've only allowed 22 receptions to running backs on the year for 150 yards and one touchdown. And that one touchdown was to Kareem Hunt on an amazing catch last week. Who knew their defense was going to be so good? I think 
thought it was going to be good, but best in the league. I think wow. it's it's a combination of ball control, and they actually have a solid defense. Definitely. But, yeah, I mean, wide receiver, A.J. Green, hamstring, uh, he wasn't doing very good. He's probably droppable uh, for most people. I mean, if, if you did yep. pick him up, I mean, and you're desperate, <laughs> you're not expecting much. Tyler? If Ike were here, I think he'd finally agree with us that you could drop. Yeah, him. Yeah, I remember him saying actually because I was watching him with the set. Uh, I watched a couple games with him. I watched this game with him this past Sunday, and when he went out with the injury, he looked me directly in the eye and said, "Yep, he's droppable now." <laughs> but uh, Tyler Boyd, uh, he, he looks like the number one option in this offense now. But again, this defense is it's pretty solid, so I, I don't know if. You're lowering your expectations, but you're probably starting them this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, it's not going to be a boom week for him, guys. And then, no. <laughs> true sample. Uh, no, nah, I don't nah. want the sample of that. <laughs> so, we're going to move on to the Colts with uh, Philip Rivers, Old Man River. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. This game seems like it's – like people are saying that it's a good matchup, but I see it as a trap game that they're just going to try and run the ball. They're going to be in, in – It's a yeah, trap. Yeah, they're, they're going to be in, in, in control the entire game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they're going to try and get Jonathan Taylor. You think so? Here. He's been – yeah, he's been struggling a little bit uh, since he's been the guy. So – what better than this week to get this, him rolling? Yeah, this, finally. this is the best matchup. Other than the Carolina Panthers, the Bengals, I, I believe, are second worst when it comes to allowing fantasy points to running backs. Yes, uh, so sir. this is the best week for Jonathan Taylor. Uh, you just want to see that volume. It's just weird seeing people like Jordan Wilkins taking his carries. Yep. But for, if for, sorry to interrupt, but for some reason, if you have Phil Rivers on your roster, you should probably start him this week against the Bengals. Yeah, you're, or why? Do, or why else do you have him? You're not wrong there. You're kind of hoping that honestly, yeah. this is the week that him and Ty finally connect on a a, a big play. I mean, you you seen the upticks in targets last week to him. Uh, How many did he see? He saw ten targets, season high. I mean, first week he saw nine targets, but. Yeah, oh, he, he had his best week. Best week. I mean, it's not. It wasn't great. He had six receptions for sixty nine yards. But you like to see Philip Rivers at least looking his way. But yeah, yeah. But other than T. Y. Hilton, I wouldn't start any other receiver on this team. It's just it, Philip Rivers is a tight end type of guy, and I, I want to yes, say that is. Trey Burton. Uh, he was with one of your streaming tight ends this week. Yep. For some reason. Coaches love him. Well, Doug Peterson, Matt Nagy, Frank, Frank Wright, Wright was with Doug Peterson they, when they won that Super Bowl with Burton. So yeah. there's that connection there. Yeah, but uh, but he see he's seen a bunch of targets, guys. He's jumped ahead of Mo Ali Cox yeah, it, and probably Jack. Yeah, Doyle. it seems like Mo Ali Cox has been just being used for run blocking now, and Jack Doyle's been a disappointment. That's because Mo Alex Cox is an absolute yeah, he, freak. A huge, like LeBron huge James dude. blocking. <laughs> so, we're, I mean, if you're starting a tight end, you're going Trey Burton, but you're probably fading Mo Alex Cox and Jack Doyle in this matchup. Yeah. I think Mo, actually Mo Alex Cox was ruled out. So Yeah, absolutely. Fading. So we're going to move on to the next game. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> surprise four and one team Chicago Bears at the uh, – Surprise! <laughs> I mean, you didn't let me finish. The Carolina Panthers. I mean, they're also a surprise. What are yeah. they? Three and two, four and one. <laughs> yeah, they're three surprising. Three and two. They're they're three and zero oh since losing McCaffrey. Who would who would have guessed? But, right. but the quarterback for this team, uh, the Chicago Bears, Big Dick Nick, as you like to call him. Uh, I mean. Fantasy wise, he's been a little under under uh, performing, but as a Bears fan, you'd like to see this. He, he beat Tampa Bay last week. Uh, granted, you know the goat didn't know what down it was. That's because Nick Foles is Tom's kryptonite. <laughs> Nick Tom's kryptonite. 
throughout his career was Eli Manning. I, I'm and willing to Bulls. go the lengths and say that it was the Giants defensive line that was Tom Brady's kryptonite. I don't know if Eli Manning was. Tom Brady didn't even want to shake Nick's hand after the game May- last week. May- don't tell maybe me it's because of COVID. Maybe don't he forgot he that. had to, like he forgot what down it was. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, he get, maybe Cleo Mack knocked him out of his ass a little too much that game. <laughs> <laughs> but I had uh, thought about streaming Bulls this week, but then I went and looked at the numbers, guys. It's not good. Uh, the Panthers are third in the league in quarterback points per game, believe it or not. They've only given up 14 points, fantasy points per game. So uh, stay away. Yeah, from they're the they're week. the team you run on, not pass on. Yes, and hopefully the Bears get Monty. Yeah, Monty. Uh, ever since this Tariq Cohen injury, he's he's finally getting that passing game that everybody thought he would maybe be a little bit more involved in this year. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the past two games since the Tariq Cohen injury, he's had six targets and eight targets, and last week he caught seven of his eight targets. So. He's getting just too much volume to not be a starter in your lineup, at least at a flex. Yep. You can expect. Well, he should be. Yes, he's, he's got a, he's got RB one potential, but at least RB two floor. Yes. Uh, yep. Agreed. But going on to the the really the only star receiver in this offense, uh, Allen Robinson. You're starting him this week. I know that. You just, yeah, Fired the defense pass for defense for the Panthers is tough, but Allen Robinson. Uh, he just sees a ridiculous amount of targets. Just so man. many. Like <laughs> he'll probably see double digits again this week. Yeah, I, I'm looking it up right now, getting him up here on the target. <laughs> he saw 16 targets last week against Tampa Bay. Ten weeks, ten targets the week before, and 13 the week before. Like this man is just a target hawk. Yeah, he averages 11 so and a half targets a game. Like, you, I follow the volume. So, uh, you're skeptical starting Darnell Mooney. Uh, yeah, deep Maybe league, Anthony maybe. Miller again in a deep league dart throw. Uh, I, yeah, I'm starting uh, Darnell Mooney in a deeper league this Good week. Good luck, pal. Uh, Thank the you. The tight end, though. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Lippy. <laughs> the tight end, though, uh, for this offense, the the undisputed red zone target leader in the NFL through Week Five, Jimmy Grandpa Graham. Hey, can you believe that? He also you also forgot he probably had the catch. Of the uh, year. so far we're only in Week Five, but but that, that was a good <laughs> one-handed filthy. catch. Uh, yeah, obviously we said it on this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Pick out the Bears all you want for signing him to that nine million dollar guaranteed contract, but they had a plan with him. Yeah, they're gonna. He's he's the clear yeah. big body red zone threat alongside Allen yes, Robinson. Yes, he, he season long could see ten. Absolutely. Touchdowns, so. Yeah, he's he's a touch touchdown dependent tight end, but you got to throw him out there with the he, good hope he's gonna get a touchdown at least targets. Yep. So we're gonna move on Agreed. to the the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater, coming off is. Probably his best week against the Atlanta Falcons, you know, giving up the most points to QBs. But we're probably going to bench <laughs> Teddy this week. Uh, the Bears, their run defense has been just atrocious this year, and that's probably attributed to the loss of Eddie Goldman uh, opting out for the season. But their pass defense, yep. I I thought I saw that they're number one against wide receivers for yards or something like that. They're mm. – they're, they're second. They're they're second. That's what it was. Back, yeah. So. No. It's so, yeah, you're not starting Teddy this week. Uh, no. Mike Davis you. though, the surprise. Yeah. Uh, must start. At this point, yeah, must start. But as soon as McCaffrey comes back, I don't see him having a role in this offense. Yep. Top ten uh, running so, back upside this week. He gets so struggling. Milk him for as much fantasy players. value as you can get till McCaffrey's out. Uh, McCaffrey's back in. So, moving on to the wide receivers, uh, the clear number one target uh, wide receiver in this offense, and Ike, Ike would hate me. DJ for Moore? Saying. Robbie Anderson. <laughs> yes. I know Bob DJ Anderson. Moore, he had uh, a good week last week, and damn right he deserved it against the Atlanta Falcons. 
He only had five I know, targets, it, though. It, it, he, most he, of his he yards came in that three. big well, play on that touchdown. But the we were talking about how he had, last week how he hadn't had any of those big plays. He was a run after the catch kind of guy, and last week he finally got one. So it, it he he it happens. You know what I mean? He's yeah, that he's, kind of wide receiver. You just wish you'd see more. He than doesn't five look like the volume guy in this offense. Like the guy, no, the wide receiver one volume. No. So he's. To me, DJ Moore is more matchup dependent in game scripts where they're going to be down and passing. You, I mean, you probably still feel like you have to. Start yeah, you him drafted him too you, early. Of where you drafted you, you can... him, but are you starting him or would you rather start? Uh, I was. I, I got know, a, I got a name. Say... Jameson Crowder. Crowder. I would start. Uh, this guy just sees too much volume and. He, even with Joe Flacco, he scored a touchdown. But that's that's yes, that's the next did. game preview. You're jumping ahead there, bud. Uh, you're fine. I just, Sorry. I, well, I couldn't compare well, I was him gonna to say, Allen Robinson. I, I was going to say, what about, would you rather have DJ Moore or Tyler Boyd for the rest of the year? Tyler Boyd? Actually, I feel like really pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So, uh. We're going to move on to – You don't have to move on to the tight end. I do you have to say to this, the, though. the Atlanta Falcons are allowing the most points to almost every position in fantasy this year, including the tight ends, which it's not a very good tight end season. And they couldn't even get Ian Thomas to get rolling against the Falcons. So I'm going to say they – He caught I... a touchdown, though, right? Now there's all he catch, I think. His only catch and only target, I believe, I he got in the end zone. He got in the end zone. Yeah, he's so, still a bomb. So we're, yeah, he wise. didn't even get in the end zone. <laughs> he got one target, oh, zero he receptions. He got in the end zone against Arizona, uh, and okay. yeah, so we're uh, okay. That's you're staying I'm away from this tight end position all year for the Carolina Panthers. It seems to not be a part of this uh, Matt Rule's offense at all. So we're going to move yes. on to the next game that you, you wanted to jump to so quickly because you love Jameson Crowder so much. <laughs> the, the New York Jets, uh, or as <laughs> I, I, I was – J-E-T-S. You're going to laugh Jets, at this. Jets, I, Jets. I, I actually heard someone call him the New York mess. The <laughs> M-E-S-S, mess, mess, mess. They are such a at shit the, show, uh, man. Miami Dolphins. Uh yeah, the the Jets are – stay away from everybody on their team, honestly, in every match. Yes, that, that is the only person Crowder. I'd be starting. And it's volume you love, but there are going to be matchups where he's going to probably only reach flex territory. But right now he's been a absolutely yeah, upside but- wide receiver two, low side – I mean upside wide receiver three, low side wide receiver two. But uh, a name I want to – Bring up to everybody with we didn't even say this will play it. Le'Veon Bell was obviously released earlier in the week. Um, LaMichael P. Ryan is a rookie. He might start seeing more um, rushing attempts. He might start being more involved in the offense. So that's just a name on the radar since running backs are tough to come by nowadays because of all the injuries. That's just. Somebody to yeah, pay I, attention to. I like the, him in Dynasty Leagues, weeks. but until Adam Gase is fired, it's Frank yeah. Gore's backfield for some reason. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. So that's enough about the New York Mets mess. Uh, moving on to the <laughs> Miami Dolphins. Ryan, and I know you guys criticized me for saying this earlier in the year, but I think it's absolutely necessary. Ryan Fitzmagic, welcome to the party. <laughs> I, we're, Ain't, ain't, ain't no, no party. party. Like Ickball party. What, what did you say? He was wide receiver. <laughs> uh, wide receiver. QB ten on the year. No, I said he was tenth in all of fantasy. Even points. even worse. <laughs> uh, so you're you're starting him. He's starting him. He's great, man. You, yeah. You, you, honestly, you're starting him. You're starting Miles Gaskin. You're starting Devontae Parker. Preston Williams is borderline flex play this week. Yeah, and Mike I mean, Kosecki, not, you're starting him. If, if, you, if you're desperate, I'd even start Matt Breida with confidence. 
<laughs> no, I'm not. I don't know. This Jets team's terrible. <laughs> da- <laughs> so down. you're starting everybody against the Jets this week for the Dolphins. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. You start every week whoever plays the Jets uh, until they start to show some competence. Y E S. Fire yes, Adam yes, Case. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so moving on to the next game: Los Angeles Rams at the San Francisco Injury Niners. Uh, we got the Los Angeles Rams quarterback Jared Goff. Uh, Coming off off of a, a decent game, I mean, he had that beautiful dime to Robert Woods for thirty yards, and then Robert Woods took it forty more yards for a touchdown. I bet you love that. Mm-hmm. I did. Your Bobby man, Trees. Bobby Trees. But uh, the the shit show, mm-hmm. pro- possibly the worst shit show running back committee in the league. Uh, are you starting anybody this week against this banged up Forty Nine ers team? Uh, Daryl Henderson, Cam Akers, Malcolm Brown. Yeah, I'm okay starting Daryl Henderson, flex play if you're desperate RB2. But I, you kind of skipped over Jared Goff, but I'm okay starting Jared Goff against his banged-up defense. I like Jared. I've liked him uh Yeah, I definitely skipped season, over him. You know? That's, that was my brain thinking if Fitzmagic can take over against his defense, I think Jared Goff has a good chance of doing the same. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, I... I like Cam Akers season long, but right now, currently, Daryl Henderson's definitely the guy. Why do you what, like Cam Akers season long, though? What is what nothing. has he shown you? Because they yes. used second round you, draft. I mean, capital? the Rams didn't have a first round pick, so this was essentially their first round pick. I mean, why would you waste your first round unless you're the Green Bay Packers? Why would you waste your first round pick on a position that you're not going to use? I suppose, but. The Bears and Packers both did it. <laughs> like I said, unless you're the Packers, if you want to throw the Bears in there with Cole Komet, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I just Cam Akers, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's probably still learning the playbook, being a rookie, not having the preseason games and all that. So that's he's he's slowing down because of that. And Daryl Henderson's been able to take advantage of it because this rushing scheme is good. This offense is efficient. Yes, it is. And, uh, and it's very I, sound. I heard rumors that Richard Sherman might be back this week. Uh, if he's out, you're starting Cooper Cup and Robert Woods with full confidence. If Richard Sherman does make it in, I'd lower your expectations on Robert Woods because he's probably going to be shadowing him. Yeah. Well, I think okay. they only play sides. So maybe they. I would, just know Cooper Cup's move, probably. Uh, he's the main slot guy the there. Side. So Van Jefferson yes, and Josh yes. Reynolds might see a d- daily dosage of Richard Sherman. But uh, the disappointment in this offense after a big week against the Eagles, Tyler Higby, uh, what was that, week three? Dr- yeah, he's, he's droppable, he's, man. seems to be competing for snaps against Gerald Everett at this point. I mean, I know the tight ends are great. I'm start, I'd Would you? start Gerald Everett over him. Yeah, it looks better. <sighs> I'd stay away if I could, but yeah, if you had to choose one, you'd start Gerald Everett over Tyler Higby. I, yep, yeah, I'd have to go. I'd have. It's not sexy. I know that's it's not, not. That's uh, that's. No, it's probably an unpopular um, decision too, but I, I just think. Yeah, Everett so that's better. enough about that position. We're gonna move on to the Forty uh, ers <laughs> He got benched this week, Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know if that was because of his game play or if he was just not 100% because of his ankle. What do, what do you think? Do you, you think he looked, he looked hurt? hurt? Yeah. No. I want no part of starting no, I, if he can avoid To him. be honest, this is a tough defense, you know, passing and rushing. Um, you're, you're starting Raheem Mostert. The guy has the guy has the speed to take it yep. to the house. I mean, you've seen it. In, you've seen it with the game samples he's had. But are you starting any receivers on this forty nine team? Are you are you maybe even starting Jarek McKinnon after how much he was involved? <laughs> Absolutely. Not. Yeah, it, I want it's all Raheem backfield. McKinnon. But Debo Samuel coming back, he looks like he might be a hundred percent healthy. You, you you confident starting him? No, he's probably going to get uh, Jalen Ramsey, nope. so I don't like that he at all. Gonna, he ain't going to be that good if Jalen Ramsey's covering him. Mm, no. Uh, D- 
Debo kind of worries me the rest of the season too. In all honesty, that's a tough injury. How about Brandon Ayuk? Uh, he kind of like we talked about Jimmy Graham having a role. Brandon Ayuk looks like they have a role for him, so I'd be okay flexing him if you have to. But hopefully, hopefully, yeah. So other, other than that, I'd probably stick away from any other receiver because uh, the clear number one option in this offense is George Kittle. Uh, you're you're starting him week in and week yeah, out. Boy. I know he had a down week last week, but come on, he had 14 receptions in one game one week. He's, he is the number one guy. So you're, you're starting him, uh, hoping right. he can uh, pick apart this Rams uh, middle of the field where Tyler Croft a couple weeks ago tore it, tore it apart with two touchdowns. So I think George Kittle's a, a strong play this week. We're going to move on to the Monday night football doubleheader. We have the Kansas City Chiefs at the Buffalo Bills. Previously moved from the Thursday night game. That's a yeah. That should be a good. good I mean, I'm a little (laughs) better than the other game. Better than a couple games, I'll tell you that. But. I don't know. I'm just a little yeah. disappointed to see Josh Allen not do that well against Tennessee. Like that's just me. I mean, he, he he was setting a, he was setting a good right. case for the MVP candidate this year, and that kind of sent him back a little bit. Yeah, they did a good game plan to to slowing him down. He didn't really look like he wanted to run as much as he normally does, which hurts his fantasy value and hurts but the team. I feel the way this offense is going, they're they're, I don't know what changed Sean's, Sean McDermott's mind, but they are a passing first offense now. So you're starting Josh yes, Allen. Are. All right, so you're starting Josh Allen this week. We're going to move on to the running backs. Uh, Devin Singletary and – is Zach Moss playing this week? Has he been cleared? Uh, I know I'm he was – Honestly, quite- not sure. Devin Singletary might have stole him that and job, TJ Yeldon. Man. Apparently, it seems like even with Zach Moss out, they don't want to give Devin Singletary the full workload. Yeah, well, I don't think he's ever going to be the guy to get to get a full workload, you know. But nah, he looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't see any. Injury designation on Zach Moss. I think he might be playing this week. Yeah, so probably temper your yeah, expectations. I mean, you're then. looking at him for mainly PPR value, especially in this matchup against the Chiefs. Yeah. So moving on to the uh, yep. surprise wide receiver uh, again on the air, Stefan Diggs. Uh, against this matchup, you see the Buffalo Bills being down. We're starting Stephon Diggs full confidence that he's going to blow up, right? Oh, yeah. That guy looks right, good. Who, right who would you rather have in this matchup, though? Uh, John Brown with, you know, a little a little bit banged up or Cole Beasley? Who would you start out of those two? Uh, that one's tough. John Brown, probably more big play upside. Uh, just yeah, hope you're, he's healthy. You're, too many injuries this year, so you're hoping I, you're hoping he stays off the injury. I mean, he's questionable going into it, but you just know. pay attention to those injury reports. If if he is ruled out, though, I mean, Cole Beasley would be a decent target flex play this week. But uh, yep. the tight end position, yep. I mean. It's hit or miss in this offense. I mean, and it's hit or miss on who's going to get it, Dawson Knox or Tyler Croft. Yeah, so yeah it's you a, don't really want either of them. I know it's tough with the bye weeks and the injuries, but try and stay away from this uh, uh, this tight end position on the Bills. Uh, but if you had to choose one, who, who would you pick this week? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that. Dawson Knox. So – we're going to move on to the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, automatic start. Uh, I don't care what defense they're playing. They, they they embarrass the Ravens defense, and they're the number one defense in the league so far. Tyreek Hill, automatic start. Travis I temper your Kelsey, expectations on Tyreek Hill just a little bit. I feel like they might try and 
make Patrick Mahomes take what the defense can give him, march down the field, and they're not going to allow that big play. But I, this might be one of those games where Tyreek yeah. Hill sees a, a very high floor. You know, eight to ten catches. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I agree. What it what we should be worried about though is what's gonna happen with CEH, but this might be his last full workload game. I mean Bell might get it have they said it? Uh yeah, with uh there's a new like I think it was like a seventy five page precautionary COVID thing that the NFL passed this week. Uh, and on it, it said that any free agent of any kind who signs, they have to go through this protocol of like five straight days of negative tests. And then they're allowed to enter the team facility. So he's not even, if, if he does everything on pace, he should be able to go to the team facility on Wednesday. So he's not playing this week. Okay. Next week, though, he's got a good chance. So it's your last week with a full workload for CEH. So, yeah, this will be your best sell high week on him if you if you are afraid of Le'Veon Bell cutting into that workload. He is going to cut into it a little bit, unfortunately. But and uh, what I still else? think Ceh should be a running back too the rest of the season. Yeah, it's just you don't know what's going to happen. Agreed. Just too much uncertainty. Uncertainty. Yep. I will say this, I you know, I said Tyreek Hill might have a tough time. That's only if Tredavious White's in. I know he was questionable. Um mm. if he's in, I think Tyreek Hill might have, you know, a, like I said, lower expectation with the you know the big plays, but if he's out then today uh Tyreek Hill might have one of those big plays. Oh sure. You starting Miko Harbin this week though? Mm, uh, Sammy Watkins is out, so it might be a Miko Harmon week. It's hard to say him or Demarcus Robinson, though, who's going to take those k- targets, you know? Yeah, Patrick Mahomes being a really good quarterback, likes to spread the ball around. This, being being as that may, you know, we're starting Travis Kelsey this week, automatic lock most weeks, yep. <laughs> if not every week besides his bye week. So uh, we're feeling pretty good with all the positions done for the Chiefs. I mean – Especially with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, they might try and, you know, might give him a chance to prove himself this week before Le'Veon Bell comes in to, and takes in that workload. Hopefully. So we're going to move on to our second part of the doubleheader the Arizona Cardinals or the Dallas Cowboys. Last uh, game. Last game of the week. And this is that other game I was telling you about that has the other highest over under uh, of the week that this and the Falcon and Minnesota game are probably the two best games to choose for DFS this week. Yeah. Um, Kyler Murray, you're starting. Dallas Cowboys are just terrible. Kyler Murray might might be QB1 this week. Would you agree? Yes. QB1 upside this week. And I, I, know, you, I know you hate me saying that because you play him in a couple leagues. Yeah. But what are you going to do? <laughs> you take him once you get. But uh, the disappointment on the year, Kenyon Drake, I mean – and he's had two great matchup against two great matchups against the Lions and the Panthers. Another great matchup against the Cowboys. Can he finally get it done? And it's the best matchup possibility, but unfortunately, he just hasn't looked good. And like you said, he's had great matchups in the past. So I, uh, it, like if you have James Robinson, you're definitely starting him over Kenyon Drake. It, like if you could sit him. Because All right. you have something better, go ahead. But in this matchup, I'm assuming you're starting him. All right, let, let's put the matchup aside for the rest of the year. You know Kenyon Drake is not being involved in the passing game. This It's apparently Chase Edmonds' role in this offense. Yep. Who would you rather have season-long, rest of the year, with his Le'Veon Bell cut, Frank Gore or Kenyon Drake? Don't say it. What the fuck, Kenyon Drake? I mean, Frank Gore is going to get the volume now that Kenyon Drake is seeing. No, he's not. I'm telling you, Michael P. Ryan's getting cut into that. Frank he, Gar won't get any more than 10, think, car- 10 to 12 think, carries. I don't think you understand, like, what I do understand. Frank Gar has over Adam Gase. Like, he must know something because Adam Gase will not give up on that old man. Yeah. Maybe he's got nudes. But uh, I think uh, both running backs on the Cardinals are startable this week. Chase Edmonds and Kenyon Drake with the amount of offense yeah. that happened in this game. 
Uh, Chase Edmonds more flex territory and Kenyon Drake RB2. Sure. But you're starting DeAndre Hopkins, uh, most targeted receiver in the league right now. Uh, I'm cool with starting Christian Kirk, too. He's starting to, to roll a little bit. Yeah, I think he uh, – I'm leaning, starting to get some confidence in him. I'm leaning more Christian Kirk, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is an Andy Isabella game, too. Yeah. Just with the amount of offense that could be scored in this game. But, yeah, I'd, I would roll out Christian Kirk if you're desperate in a flex spot. Maybe wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. But you're staying away from the tight end position for sure. I, no doubt. The tight end in this offense is mainly just used to block, guys. Uh, another reason why the tight ends are down this year. Yep. So we're going to move on to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, last team of the week and probably the biggest news in this past week, Dak Prescott going down to – Horrible. So disgusting. Very gruesome injury. Uh, yeah. He was crying on the field, man. They, they looked painful. Yeah, it was bad. Uh. Andy Dalton's going to come in. I mean, now the Cowboys are looking like geniuses signing him in the offseason. Yeah. Um, the old red rifle. I'll tell you my opinion real quick, and I'll let you have your opinion because, I mean, this offense is still really good. The, Andy Dalton probably has the best offensive skill positions around him in his entire career. Uh, it's not going to be what it is with Dak when he was there. But I could see it being like sixty to seventy five percent of the production of what Dak was. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I think he could do okay. He could probably be on the, the streaming radar the rest of the year. Um, best weapons of his career, so why not? You know, I kind of I see this at worst case scenario being like Jameis Winston last year. It's just. He, he might have a lot of turnovers, uh, you know, trying to get in, in rhythm again. But he's just going to have to be – he's going to have to throw so much with this defense giving up so many points. Yep. The volume's there for him to succeed. It's just whether he can or not. So, I mean, uh, we're going to move on to automatic start on this def, uh, this offense uh, week in, week out. Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, yeah. Just so he's an insane amount of volume in the passing game. And then with Dak out, obviously, yeah, he's it, the offense is going to revolve a little more around Zeke. Yeah, Zeke might be – he's going to give Alvin Kamara a run for his money for number one running back on the year. Yes, he is. So, we're going to move on to the wide receivers. Uh, obviously, you're lowering your expectations even in this great matchup against the Cardinals just because Andy Dalton, you know, it's he's not Dak. But – you could see a disappearing act from Amari Cooper if he's lined up on Patrick Peterson, too. I mean, Patrick Peterson hasn't been great this year, but he I, I remember seeing Steve Kimes kind of calling him out a little bit, having saying that their star players aren't playing up to their potential. So well, maybe it lit a fire underneath Peterson's ass. Or maybe Amari Cooper just doesn't want to play. You never know. <laughs> what do you think about Michael Gallup, man? Panic meter 10? Oh, not yet. No, it seemed like when Andy Dalton came in, he liked Michael Gallup. I mean, he, he Michael Gallup's the reason they won last week to get in that field goal range. Yes, he was. Dirty he catch, man. Up. Yeah, that one dirty toe-tap catch. I mean, so it's it's unpredictable still, but I, I from the small sample size we've seen, I mean, it looks like Andy Dalton kind of favors Gallup a little bit. Yep. Obviously, uh, I mean, C.D. Lamb is just a stud. I think he's flex worthy every week in this offense. What do you think? I agree. Absolutely. You start all three of these guys uh, every week ish. Michael Gallup's the only one that he's, he he's be the most scared of. Of this offense, for the most part. Yeah. He's yep, going to have yep. boom weeks. He's going to have his bus weeks. Now, the one person I honestly think that's probably going to be hurt the most by the stack injury is Dalton Schultz. Mm hmm. Uh, Dak really seemed to like his tight ends. I, it, it was just always a part of his game, whether it was Jason you know, or Dalton Blake Schultz. Jarwin and yeah. or Schultz. You know, it didn't really matter. Yeah, he just really liked his tight ends as a safety blanket. I don't know if Andy Dalton's the same way. I could be wrong. I wouldn't surprise me if I am wrong. I'm not right a lot. <laughs> but he's my one prediction. I mean, you could probably – 
you could start them this week with the the bye weeks and the injuries, but I I would lower expectations. Yeah, we're pretty much on the same page with that. Well, I I think that you know wraps everything up, Dylan. You want to take us out? Yeah, uh, guys, as always, please subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel where you find uh, the rest of the great podcasts. I know you were on the Big Bosses podcast last night. La plans to go back and listen to that. That one's the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. That one was a fun podcast. Uh, those guys really know what they're doing, and I I hope one day we're, we're as you know, good as them. Definitely, man. And then please follow me on Twitter at dclemens2222. You can. I also do the tight end streaming article every week, and then this week I filled in for the start sit article as well. So please uh, go ahead and read that, and uh, I'd love to hear some feedback. So go ahead hit me up on on Twitter, uh, Laplant. Where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, on Twitter at be like underscore Mike with two eyes, and I write the weekly trend article every week. It comes out Monday. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see the different things happening throughout the week, you know, and, and I give you a little insight into it each week. Um, and I, I'm going to give a little, give a little plug for our, our bud, Mike. Uh, we're, we're still thinking about you, but, uh, you can find him at Twitter, uh, at Ike two, one, two, one. He, uh, he writes the weekly injury reports. Uh, he's been doing a really good job at that. And we're thinking about you, bud. You know, wishing you the best of luck. Of course. Alrighty, guys. Until next week. Talk to you then. Peace out. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have.